What's up, YouTube? Um, today I just want to go through the matrix uh, cloner object, which is located here beneath cloner. And um, a lot of people kind of just skip by the matrix. They don't know what it does, what it's for. And um, it's actually quite a useful tool. So I'm just going to add in a matrix and uh, just try and explain it to you. Matrix is basically like um, it holds positions for like objects to uh, map onto. It's basically just position locations. It's not actually an object. And uh, one way you can use it is, for example, um, a good way to show it is click on the matrix, add a deformer, twist. And yes, you can use deformers with the matrix, which is really cool. And then, um, just trying to think of the best way to show this. So yeah, if I then create a cloner, and I uh, create a sphere, for example, and I set the cloner to uh, object mode, then I drop in the matrix, it basically maps my objects onto the matrix, the sphere, is mapped onto the kind of twisted matrix positions, but the, the advantage is it doesn't deform the um, geometry. So basically, um, I can take this twist off. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, if you put the twist into the cloner, you get this kind of distortion, and um, you can click the cloner and the twist object and hit Alt G to group them together. Just put that twist below the cloner. And um, as you can see, it pretty much does the same thing, but um, it kind of it deforms the geometry. And that's the advantage of the matrix is it basically, because um, it's just position data, when you add the twist to the matrix, it deforms the, um, the kind of locators instead of the actual geometry, which is great. So that's one advantage of using it instead of just putting it onto the cloner. And um, you can also combine this with thinking particles. So I'm just going to do a very quick example. I'm just going to delete everything. Uh, create a null to emit from. Put it into circle mode. Change the color. Oops, change the color to like a green. Make it bigger slightly. Just add an espresso tag directly onto the null. And then um, drag and drop the null into the espresso. Right click, new node, espresso. Uh, sorry, new node, thinking particles, generator, p storm. Add material alignments, gold matrix, global position. Global position to emitter position, emitter alignments to global matrix. That makes us emit from the null. Just going to rotate it, the null, 90 degrees. You don't get an update until you rewind and hit play um, if you use this method. So, okay, we've got a few particles there. Might reduce the number of particles. So, click on the P Storm node, put the counter on 12. So, I'm just playing that back. Okay, got a few particles to work with here. The cool thing about the matrix is. We'll just add in a matrix. We can actually um, map this onto the thinking particles. So if I go into object mode, as you can see, there's an object mode for the matrix as well. And I can drag and drop the particles into here. And I can actually do that directly without using particle geometry or anything like that. I can just go to the thinking particles tab, which is usually located under uh, simulate thinking particles, thinking particle settings. I've just snapped it to the top uh, right here because it's just easier. And uh, yeah, so I can just drag and drop the group all, which is like all the particles. And as you can see now, if I rewind and play, the matrix is mapping onto the thinking particles. And then what we can do is we can add in the cloner, put that into object mode, and then add the matrix as the object. Obviously, we have to give it something to um, duplicate. Say a cone. Try and drop a cone in there. Uh, just make them small. 
just because it's kind of quite clear, clearly a distinct object. And I can kind of turn off the matrix uh, visibility. And now we've got the cloner mapping onto the matrix, which is mapped onto the thinking particles. So what's the advantage of this? Well, as I mentioned before, to avoid the uh, kind of geometry deformation. So if you want to make any kind of twist operation, do it to the matrix. So I'll just add a twist under the matrix. And I can uh, just make it unlimited. I can actually I might make it visible. And rotate it this way. Yeah, because I want to give it kind of vortex effect. Yeah. As you can see, now the particles are coming out like a vortex, and um, but they're not deformed. So this is like this is just so many possibilities that I can't even go through them all in this tutorial. Just so many possibilities, but um, and then what you can do is you can add like an effector to the matrix and different effectors to the cloner, like the cloner. We can add a formula effector, it's always a good one. Go to uh, parameters, just scale. I want to make it kind of not too strong. So now we've got the matrix kind of giving us the vortex effect and then the cloner doing the formula effect. And then actually if we add a formula to the matrix, I think it would probably do nothing because uh, there's no like scaling with the matrix, um, it's just positions and rotations. That's pretty much it. So it's really cool. And you can maybe, um, like, we can go to frame zero and kind of animate the twist. Just go to frame zero and make it zero, and then kind of, kind of, I'll make it like twist as it goes along. I think we need to extend the lifespan. P storm, give them like 200. So they're not dying out too quickly. And as you can see, now we've got this like vortex effect going on. And we just did it with a deformer, no kind of complicated uh, scripts or anything. We can make it maybe speed up here. Let's make it. Been crazy towards the end. Oops. So that's pretty much the basics. The matrix is like a kind of gateway tool. It just um, helps you kind of map objects onto it without deforming them. Oh, actually, it looks like crap. I'm just going to. Cloner. Yeah. Actually, what happens? Yeah, so we can add like deformers to the matrix, all these deformers here. And then you can also add the effectors as well. So I think, yeah, the formula effector should affect it. If I set it to position data. Yeah, I don't think scale makes any difference. So that, I've got like one formula effector for the cloner, one formula effector for the matrix. And the, the formula effector for the matrix is just doing the positions and the scaling is done on the cloner. And that doesn't look too good. So I'll just try a different. There we go. That looks strange, but there's just so many crazy possibilities. So I hope that um, just gave you a brief insight into what the matrix does.